Hi guys, we're uh, doing some of the finishing touches on the PM940M. Um, I got the... had a little bit more backlash in the Y, so I took it apart and made sure everything was tight this time on it. And right now we're just doing the break-in. So everything's pretty much finished. The only thing I have left to do... I have a chip pan that's going to go on here. You'll see it later to try to catch my chips because this machine I'm going to leave two six inch vices on most of the time so we'll leave it like that for now so really um, all the ball screws are done all the mounts are done uh, I made up uh, these took a quite a bit of time I changed the uh, Y mount the other day if you look on the Y mount on this one it has about a uh, one inch flange sticking out which I cut the motor shaft down a little bit which leaves the least amount of stick out possible but I didn't want to make the other guys uh, have to cut off the motor so I made uh, the new mount for the Y it's uh, 1.6 inches tall so I made uh, five of these which that took a little while for the Y mount so you won't have to cut the motor shafts on the 900 ounce steppers because that's kind of a pain. I don't know. I, you can always make them shorter if you want, if you care about it. Basically, you're talking about three quarters of an inch. So what we have now is we're just doing break-in. So I'm having it machine a area. Now my current travels are 29.4 on the X, 13.9 on the Y. And the Z is 19.4. Now I have a little bit of restrictions on the X only because the uh, stepper motor does hit right there. So uh, I could balance, I needed, I wanted the stepper on the other side from a travel standpoint, but I kept running into my toolboxes over there, so I just moved around. Because for me, most of the time, I don't deal with pieces that are over 24 inches long, so 29 is actually just fine as far as I'm concerned. So we're going to run and break it in for a while. Um, everything's good. I had to, had to redo the VFD because it wasn't running my motor at full power, but that's all set. Uh, the motor's done. You know, the gearbox on this is much quieter, I mean, than any of the other RF45s that I've run. Uh, I'm actually almost tempted to leave this thing and put a 3600 RPM motor on it and not worry about... Uh, pitting the belt drive on it. I mean, it's almost that good. I'm actually really quite surprised with that. But we'll machine with it for a while and we'll see what we're doing. So for right now, we're just running it around um, for break-in. And then after it's all broken in, I'm going to run it for... This is going to do this. It's actually machining a square uh, 5,000 step to cut one inch deep. So it'll take it, uh, what, 500 times to do this? So, now what I'm running for rapids right now is I'm running uh, 140 inches on the X and Y. And then, and I can do 150 if I want it. I really don't though. In, in real life, I'll probably run it at 110 or 125. And then the Z is set for, I think the Z is set for 100. So, these drivers, I'm not loving these drivers. I got a a set of three of the newest uh, big gecko drives and I'm sure I'll get more speed out of them. The, uh, the gecko drives run what's called drive morphine and they give you about one third more power at high RPM than a standard driver does. So these drivers, are I bought them for the uh, Weiss 30 which is what they'll go on in just a couple weeks. Now there is one thing that's interesting on the travels on this mill and it's probably worth looking at for people because a lot of people will care about this it's moving almost full travels right now and if you look at the spindle location in the forward direction it's about an inch off of the table I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see it in the uh, negative Y direction it has about three inches 
Oops, I don't want to shake it too much. You can't really see from that angle. I'll have to move it over a little bit here. So what that's telling you is that it goes more backwards than forward. So if you're planning jig plates and stuff, uh, now I don't know who's going to hang jig plates 10 inches off their table, but you can see right there. It's about almost three inches forward. Now I did not cut my table. That's the factory cut out right there. So it would be really easy to even out the travel <clears throat> by taking an inch. And if you notice, the Y mount goes just over the NEMA 34 stepper and that wasn't an accident. That's part of the reason why we went with the larger hole in the front because you basically have unlimited over travel in the front. So considering that you have 13.9 inches right now with no cutting, it would be real easy to go ahead and just take two more inches there. If you went two and a quarter, so you got 14, 15, you can get 16 inches of Y out of this and be pretty centered on the table too. So that actually would be what I would say would be maximum Y cutting on this. 16 inches for a home uh, benchtop mill is really, really nice on the uh, Y axis. So that's it. We're going to let it run like this for a few hours and just uh, see how the break-in goes. The uh, 900 ounce steppers do just fine. This, the uh, Y stepper never even gets warm. Uh, and really when you're running at higher speeds like this, steppers actually run cooler. It would probably get hotter if I ran it at 15 inches per minute. Because at 100, right now they're running at 140 inches. At 140 inches, you can't really deliver the full 6.1 amps to the steppers because they're just not capable of delivering that current at that voltage that you have. So that's it. We're doing a break-in right now. The only thing I have to do really before I start making parts is I need a wire run, some kind of wire. I can make parts with it, but i got to tuck in my wires. I'm kind of watching the X one here. Uh, to see how I want to do the cable support on that one. The Y is easy enough. And then the Z, I probably won't do anything to because nothing really bugs it. So we'll leave it. So we've got a couple cable supports to go get and I'll do that over the next few months. And uh, now I have not done anything with the base yet and I'm gonna work on the base too, but I'm gonna do some cutting with it first and we'll see how it works. So the next video, uh, we'll do a backlash video once it's all broken in. And right now I'm doing pretty good on the backlash, like 1,000s on the X, 1,000s on the Y, and one point, or what, uh, 2,000s on the Y. And uh, actually I was really good on the Z. The Z was only giving me 1,000s uh, backlash. So I'm really kind of happy with all the backlash so far. Um, but really the axes need to break in. They're always stiff. I got them set a little bit tight right now, and the screws are going to loosen up a little bit. A lot of the backlash you get when they're brand new is just stick slip from the seals on the bearings and the screws being tight. As everything breaks in, a lot of times the backlash gets better. So um, that's it right now, guys. Thank you.